welcome to Tree Talk and our latest interview in the tree house with Susie Edwards Goose. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> a pagan artist and tattooist and friend of mine. We haven't known each other that long, Susie, have we? How long have we known each other, Sheena? Um, I don't know. A couple of years? Three years. A couple of years. A couple of years. We met at sort of various sort of different pagan these sort of festivals, wasn't we did, it? I think. Doing events. Yeah, yeah. I was probably playing the music or maybe I had a stall and you had a stall. And we kind of, I don't know, we kind of connected and then yeah. and then I came to your first album launch, you did. Morgan's Path. You did. Yes. And you haven't stopped since? No, <laughs> no. And I, oh, and you ordered a pendant from me. I did. Morgan yes, pendant. Yes, which I'm yes. not wearing. Yes. But I wear every time we, every time we play. I've seen it. So, I've yeah, it's it. a, it's a yeah. complete ritual now. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you for nice. that. Thank you for um, Anyway, so, Susie, you are a pagan artist and a tattooist. Yes. Um, and a creator of things. many things, <laughs> many things. So, can you start off by telling us... Um, about your background, where did it all start? Okay, um, <laughs> I've always drawn and painted. Yeah, my family. Once my dad's side of the family were artists, and they were quite spiritual. So my were grandma they? was a, a spiritualist person. I've got a very old uncle in Australia who's actually an exorcist. Um, really? So it, yeah. It and um, yeah, there's a family of healers and all oh. sorts of strange things. So I kind of grew up with it. Um, and then when I was about, I don't know, 14, I started to question belief um, and I looked into lots of different religions and um, nature-based belief was the one thing I couldn't actually question because it happens because the moons change and the seasons change and so that was where my spiritual life started. Um, so then my artwork followed that. Yeah. Um, and I used to draw pen and ink drawings. Um, I remember drawing um, the God Pan and the Goddess Diana when I was 18. And oh, really? Was, yeah, and that was my, my first little kind of coming out of, of my sort of belief, I suppose. Yeah. Um, have you still got that painting? I haven't, no. Oh. I haven't. They've gone. They've gone there. Oh, OK. But, um, but yeah, I... Uh, Must have been good then. Oh, that's where, that's where it started for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've always, I've always painted slightly odd off the wall stuff I don't do a lot of conventional artwork it's all kind of you need to kind of read the symbolism in it to know what it's about I okay suppose. yeah yeah so it's it's rooted in your own spirituality absolutely yeah. yeah I mean I have I do commissions obviously um which is other people's ideas but they tend to be that way inclined anyway because they see my work and they kind of want something yeah. that's that's along yeah. those lines so, so they yeah. sow the seed and then you interpret that yes. I, yes. their idea yes with lots of discussion and i would yeah. imagine there is lots of discussion yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean I, a thing that i've started recently more well, recently the last sort of four years is alter icons so i will make an icon of the person's deity if that's what they want um so I've done well. One of the ones I've done is Andraste, who's up there um, as an. Isn't she gorgeous? Yeah. I love her. She's yeah. so beautiful. She looks so lovely in the treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> she says we love me. her. Yeah. She might want to stay. <laughs> There's a couple of people out there that are priestesses of Andraste. You might have to fight for that. Actually. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um. So. So. Okay. So that's. It all started when you were when you were kind of in your teen mm. years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then how did that how did you continue to express that creativity? Uh, just through the paintings or what happened? Just there? through paintings and then um I mean I write a bit as well, but not massively. Do you? Um yeah, I write a bit of poetry. I've got a couple Do of you? I've got a couple of published poems out there somewhere. Have you? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. And yeah. um but didn't bring those with you. No, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And then um, I learnt to tattoo, so I was doing a lot. Of my, a lot of my creative work was going into that. So I, I had a kind of a period where I didn't do a lot of actual painting because my work was that kind of creativity, and I did really have the time afterwards to do that. Yeah. Um, but it kind of bubbles to the surface, doesn't it? So it, it kept coming back, and it was actually a friend of mine, a really old friend of mine called Fiona, who wrote a poem. Um, about being woman and being wolf um, and she sent me a copy of this poem and I illustrated it 
and from then I started to paint again and that was probably my early 30s I'd say okay. I started to really paint again yeah 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 and as well as your painting I mean because your your work takes you kind of all over the country doesn't Everywhere. it and beyond yeah. so yeah. what else do, what else has evolved um, from your so I well I do I do ritual ink work um mm. with groups of people um I'm also I work with Sam Marks um with various Ellen retreats, Ellen the Antlered Goddess. We yes. Do, we go to the Highlands every year, which is fabulous. Um, we've done a number of retreats in Essex. Um, we have a Scottish retreat. Sam's now moved to Scotland, so it's yes. way easier for Sam. She's up the road now, which is yeah. fab. Um, and, and didn't you create something with Sam? We did. We did the Ellen uh, the Antlered Road. Yes. So Sam wrote it, um, yeah. and I illustrated it, and that's the 35 card oracle. And that was one crazy summer, you know, with Sam ringing me and going, there's another five, there's another set, <laughs> and me kind of, you know. Um, and it was quite, it was it was crazy and scary and thoroughly enjoyable to do it. Yeah, that's interesting yeah. because I've also You've, been yeah. in the same position where I've collaborated with my sister, mm. Tanya, who was an, it illustrated our oracle deck, yeah. The Magic of Nature. And that took us three years. Mm you know, from start to finish, meeting over cups of tea in coffee shops and mm. writing, thinking of what theme the, the, the deck was going to be about and then choosing nature and then, oh, yeah, but what in nature, birds, animals, mm. you know, trees, yeah. seasons. Yeah. I know Sam had the idea way yeah. back and then when she saw my icons, she decided that was going to be the style of, of what it needed, so we did it from that, yeah, but it was a long process. Yeah. Yeah. And it was crazy, it was, you know, I'm sure you had it as well, where you think the same thing at the same time and all these mad phone calls to each other yeah. and all that, you know, yeah. where, where you're kind of on the same buzz and you're doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're singing yeah. off the same page. And it's quite epic, you know, people sort of, I don't know if you found this, you go buy a tarot pack or you go buy an oracle pack and you just kind of pick this pack off the shelf, but the, what goes into that, behind it, the create the creative yeah. writing it's immense, and producing it's immense and the amount whole, of work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. real like as you say, it's a journey. It is a real it's a complete journey. journey. Yeah. And especially as you, as it's to do with, you know, it's a spiritual yeah. deck. Yeah. So it's that is a spiritual yeah. journey in itself. It's you yeah. live the metaphor. Absolutely. Um yeah. and your I've seen your your deck. It's beautiful. I haven't seen it in the flesh, but I've mm. seen pictures, photos. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. Thank you. So how is that going? How long has that been out for now? Um, it's been a couple of years now and we we're, we're going well. That's gone quick. Yeah, we're going well. We're going well. We we still regularly we're still regularly selling. It's it's good. Uh, still getting orders in. Um Sam's doing a, a lot of Ellen work at the moment with the sort of journey box for the year. So there are people that are doing that that are yeah. having the Oracle as well. And it's lovely to see it. Yeah. Good. And do you do workshops with the Oracle as um, well? We have done, yes. We've done Oracle workshops. Um, we've done a, a, I think we did a, a full day workshop a couple of times. And we also use it on the Ellen retreats as well. So it comes Fantastic. out. There's, there's the whole kind of Oracle yeah. moment comes out. Yeah. 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 So it is still, and it's still really relevant. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's, I'm just getting to the point now with it where I can actually see beyond the, the pictures because as an artist you, you see it differently. Yeah. So I can, I've, it's been a long enough gap now where I can actually look at that work objectively and yeah. see it as an oracle and not just as my artwork. Which yeah. Because I'm always kind of going, oh, I maybe, should have done, maybe I could have done this, but now I don't do that. Yeah. yeah it's the same with all, all paintings. You never see it as other people see it. Yeah. yeah. You just see all the bits that you should have done differently. Now, talking about your paintings, you have brought some of them with you, as we've already seen, Andraste. Uh, so, can you can you tell us a little bit about this this picture? My Andraste, um, she's she's our one of our Grove patron goddesses in the little group that I work with. Um, and for me, she's she embodies this land. I do a lot of a lot of work in this area a lot of work in norfolk and a lot of work in somerset and all of those areas have got those big reed beds and she's of the other of sort of fenland that kind of um, reed bed landscape um lots of mist and water okay um and she's a very strong warrior image as well and mm. for me whenever i see a heron i think of andresti um that sort of powerful silent um yeah yeah. Yeah. And she wasn't she the goddess that um, Boudicca yes. was devoted yes, to? Yes, she was. Wasn't she, she was. Yeah. yeah, 
so she is and she's she she's victory she's yeah um, but that she's kind of almost like a gentle victory as well okay um yeah and i have another painting of her that i couldn't bring because she wouldn't fit through the door it's huge um and <laughs> next time next time, next time. yeah we'll get into build, 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 build an extension in and we yeah, can bring the bigger that's it, yeah but um and the one the bigger one that i've got she's actually got a bird in her hand a yeah. reed warbler in her hand because there is that sort of gentleness as well but yeah she's quite a powerful image um i paint a lot of powerful women i paint a lot of very strong goddesses yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So, do you feel with that connection to the earth and the elements and and that goddess energy, um, which you know is that feminine, divine, feminine principle that's coming through now on the earth? And what about what about the god? Well, for me, I've been trying. I've actually been trying to stop painting goddesses for two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> really? I've been, I have been trying. Go away, goddess. Yes, I've been trying. Um, and. I'm very big at the moment on the idea of bringing the God energy back because I feel, you know, the goddess has come come up and people understand what the goddess is now. Um, and yeah. unfortunately, the God seems to have been sort of treated as a consort and there has to be that balance there. So the work that I've started to do last summer is about, um, with, with other people too, is bringing back a balance and bringing back god goddesses balance so yeah. um my next project is a god-based project oh. i'm going to start painting gods yeah um and one of my big deities is pan and one is gwyneth myth yeah so yeah i i try and, and well this this is my pan design independent which is made by my friend Stephen Maddock who's oh, an okay. amazing jeweller yeah um and i actually tattooed this image on him and he made this pendant from that Okay. Um, so it's this idea of perhaps bringing back a bit more of a balance and maybe honouring the god as much as we honour the goddess because he kind of, kind of gets pushed. Well, yeah, bit, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. We need that balance yeah, in all aspects of our absolutely. lives. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, I've, as I say, I've been I've been trying to stop painting goddesses for for a couple of years. So yeah. next year is my year to start really. Okay, painting I look god. forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> now the next painting. This. And this is called Breathing the Grandmothers, and I painted this after I did a sweat lodge. Um, and I went to see a certain band launch their first album, which was yours. <laughs> and there was a song on there, um, the Earth Earth Chant, Earth Chant song, oh. which became our sweat lodge song. Um, and we went, I think, the next day or the day after, and we went off to Glastonbury. Um, and my lovely friend Tegwin held a, held a sweat lodge. And I came home and I painted this. Um, and the the four figures in here, these four figures, are actually the only humans in this picture, um, and everything else is what's in the smoke. So these are the grandmothers, um, and it's all about these these ancestral women coming to watch over us when we journey. Yeah, um, yeah, and bring, yeah, and bringing their guardians and their helpers as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I painted that. I say, well, I was still glowing from the sweat lodge, and you now know because you've done sweat lodge. I've done one sweat lodge, yeah, it's a profound experience, yeah, it is. and that is where the, the song, the call of yeah. the ancestors, came afterwards. Yeah. I came back you, from that. You yeah. can't describe. You, it can't yeah. not affect you. Yeah. yeah, On on a very profound level. Yes, deep it's level. a huge connection. Yeah, huge... I'd love to do it again. Actually, I'd love yeah. to do a sweat lodge again. Yeah. We must talk about that. We as will well. talk about this. Another yes. thing, yes. Susie. Now. What about him, him over there? I should pick him up. Yes, I please. Bring him in. So this, this lives in my house at the moment. I'm going to pop that in front of the ground. Excuse me. Yeah, goodness. it's beautiful. Um, and I'm going to move my cup. Gorgeous this, colours. This started out as a canvas um, that had a green man on it. And it was a kind of really sketchy green man. Um, and I thought, I need to do something with that. And he actually became green pan. Um, so that it's this figure bursting out of the green, but he's got the horns yeah of pan. And he's got that kind of there's quite a panish look going on there um yeah and green man green pan um, he's almost day glow isn't he, he is actually yeah yeah <laughs> and in my house i've got a little corner that's dedicated to pan so there's a little statue of pan Lovely. and some bits and pieces and a, a goat skull and what i can just kind of imagine a candle underneath yes, him and it, and yeah sort of like, you know yeah. feathers and bones and, and yeah. i think you know, Pan's full of mischief, but he's also nature. That whole bit in Wind in the Willows, you know, with the with the uh, the pipe at the gates of dawn and all yes. that. So yeah. yeah, so the idea of the green man being Pan is is kind of is in that painting. Yeah, um, and he hasn't actually been out 
and being exhibited yet, so he he will be at some point. Okay, so he needs to get out. He, he needs, needs to get to out be, more, Pam. You need to get out there, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and the next one. Oh, the next oh one. My okay, God, so this I'm going to gently lift this one. Should over. I? This is put Pam down. Um, put put him down. Put Pam yeah. down. Yes, pick, pick Don't you get Pam. Right, and I'm going to stand that in there. Okay. I'm just lean him on the edge. Oh. So this is another one of these male images, and. I started to get haunted by the idea of the berserker, which are the bear warriors. It's a, it's a Viking thing. Um, the wearing of bear skin and the going completely crazy in battle. Um, and this guy, um, it, all of my pages have a story. So this guy is or was a berserker. He's quite scarred and quite kind of old. And he's clearly survived a lot of battles. And... Um, there's a lot of, of sort of speculation about whether the berserkers were, you know, fed alcohol and, and mm. mushrooms and all sorts of things to work themselves into this this frenzy of, of battle. Yeah. Um, something like football fans try and do today. With the, yeah, with, oh. with the, you know, several several parts yeah. of Stella and a, and a bit of craziness with everybody kind of whipping up the energy. Yeah. Um, and this guy here with the with the, the bear claws on his necklace. Um, He's the guy who would kind of initiate you, I think. I think he's been a berserker, um, and he's survived it, and he's wearing his bear skin. Um, yeah, and he's got his, his totems around him, so if you're brave enough to face him across the fire, um, yeah, then you've got that. So this is bear magic? Bear magic, yeah. Wow. And bear magic is this time of year. Really? Uh, yeah, this time of year. It's funny, I was talking this with a lovely lady um, called Shemaya about, about bears and about how... This time of the year, we tend to, to, to look and think about bears. And I think it's because real bears are hibernating. So that means yeah. they can dream. So they can yeah. dream us. So if they're out there dreaming, then that's how come we start to think bears. Don't think about bears in the summer, do you? Don't think about bears no. Bears. And like as you yeah. say, the bears, t this is their seasonal time yeah. you know, to, yeah, so to hibernate. Yeah. They would go into their caves. That's it. And I think a lot of us, well, I know I do. Yeah, I we all do. Come the autumn, late autumn, you know, that crossover, yeah, yeah. you think, oh, I just want to yeah. go and find that's it. A cave. Yeah. I normally come down here in the treehouse. So yeah. This is my cave. Yeah. But yeah, it's that that kind of pull mm. to get back yeah. into the earth. Yeah. To, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, to bury yourself under a tree somewhere. Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. Just yeah. to kind of have a rest. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> because you know, in this yeah. frenetic, busy society that we live in, we um, we move away, don't we, mm. from, from I think things that can can recharge us. And yeah. I think as well, sustain it's, us. It's the idea of um, you know we we've, we've evolved in the same way that everything else on the planet has um, to, to be geared to the level of light that there is and I think we try and run our bodies and our lives mm. th at the same rate in the winter that we do in the summer and we're not actually designed to do that you know everything slows down the trees slow down the animals slow down and we should too and if we don't that's when we perhaps become ill at ease and get dis-ease and get so ill in the winter I, I absolutely agree and don't you think that technology is kind of pulling us in the other direction mm. to an yeah. extent if yeah. we're not haven't got that awareness yeah. to realize that actually that's what it's doing mm -hmm. um but it's pulling us because it's becoming it's progressing at such a fast pace yeah but then you know and we're all sort of well you know struggling to keep up with it scampering so, yeah. to keep up yeah. with it all you know must upgrade must have the latest mm. this you know the fastest this, this the fa oh yeah. my yeah. god it yeah. goes on because it's i think because it, everybody else is running ahead with it but mm. i think as long as there are people with tree houses people that have got their place <laughs> don't you know what i mean though there are still yeah. people building tree houses there. Yeah, yeah, people yeah needing to go out and sit in the woods yeah. and sit and drum and and sit with whatever their magic is and that's inherent within us irrespective of what the technology is yeah um you know i mean when when you kind of do workshops and what have you it's that thing of let's all switch the phones off let's all step away from that and let's yeah. actually be in in the journey and in the moment yeah. um and as long as we've still got the spaces to do it which is probably why it's become so popular which is why there are so many people out there now who are searching for something because spiritual seekers yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so if Talking about spiritual seekers, if somebody was to come to you, you know, do, are you finding that people gravitate to you, wanting, you know, yeah. a piece of you, <laughs> <laughs> your knowledge, your wisdom? Um, I don't. I tend to think I haven't got any. This is oh. what I say to people. I don't think I've really got any. I think it's about instinct, and I think it's about, you know, this is this is. I think I think it's that thing I say to a lot of people. There's no wrong way. There's no wrong way. If it, if it feels right what you're doing, then do it. 
Mm. Um, and it's about, I think it's about taking responsibility for yourself and for what you do and for understanding, you know, that things are a journey. There's no, and even though we've got this technology and we can go on the internet and we can buy ourselves whatever we like, there's no, um, there's nothing that can make up for actually walking the path and making the journey. And creating your own absolutely magic yeah, and absolutely. you know through your art yeah. whatever that art is yeah. whether it's writing painting yeah you know but there's no wrong um, way to do anything music whatever it is yeah. no you're right yeah and as I long as you're doing it from from the heart absolutely yeah. and and I think we were we were discussing earlier if people didn't buy my work I'd still have to paint yes <laughs> it's like if people didn't buy your music and your yeah. books you'd still have oh, to do it because without you can't a doubt, not without do a doubt it. that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which, yeah, so that is it's always going to be there, um, yeah. whether people like it or not. So so tell us, Susie, what are you working on at the moment? What can people look forward to? Oh, um, what can people look forward to? I've just... Booked. What are you looking forward yeah, to? What am I looking forward to? <laughs> okay, so next year. Um, I'm, I've just booked um, with a couple of friends of mine mm. um, who are based around a, a, a similar kind of you know god energy um i've booked a gallery for soway next year so i will have an exhibition next year um around Can you tell us where? it'll be in glastonbury okay yeah, yes i will i'm booked into glastonbury gallery next year oh lovely around that's fantastic um and it'll be a god based i'm not gonna okay. say too much but it'll be a god based um a god based exhibition yeah okay. and plus um holding sacred space dedicated to god and goddess we did a little bit of it um this year and next year there'll be more of that there'll be more of that um bringing things into balance okay and allowing people to sit in balance so holding sort of ritual Hold, ceremony yeah, yeah and holding for anyone that wants to come oh, okay to, to be um to be honoring god and goddess, goddess as equals yeah you know because it, it needs doing it yep. to, yeah, yeah. But definitely. if people were to come to you and say we'd like a well hand fasting, for example, would you do a hand fasting? Do I, you do hand yeah, fastings? Yeah, I do hand fastings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what other things, perhaps? Um, I can do. I do hand fastings. I do any any ceremony that people ask for. I do. Yeah. I do um, skin marking ceremonies. Um, I quite happily run an extremely raucous drum workshop, as I'm sure a number of people will tell you as well. Okay. So yeah, any any sort of. I mean. The idea of making ceremony, I know some strong people that make ceremony and yeah. it's it's nice to make ceremony but it's nice to make unscripted ceremony and to just kind of let it flow the same way that you do really is to is to, to, to sit and discuss what you're gonna do and let it flow in a natural way and not yeah. have rules and not so that people that are new to it don't feel that they're gonna do anything wrong. Yeah. And that's the other thing as yeah. well. Um, you know, I I hope that anyone who sits in a circle with me if I'm holding a, a space whether they've been doing it a week or they've been doing it 20 years will feel that they can do that and that they yeah. feel that they, they need to know things or that they yeah. can't do it and stuff like that because it is it needs to be inclusive i know exactly what you mean it needs so to be i run a, 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 a journey circle yeah. uh, about a, a year now and everybody's always welcome mm, yeah. you know and there's no right and wrong way yeah. of doing it yeah you know it's, a, it's about yeah. allowing it yeah to that's happen. it and i think people you know. now are so scared of of embarrassing themselves yeah. and doing it wrong yeah. and you know the first law of it is there is no wrong no you know as long as you're kind and as long as you're doing what you're doing from the heart and you're not deliberately you know doing anything horrible to people then everything's right yeah, yeah. and everything's allowed yeah that's great yeah. that's great so we look forward to more of the same from yes. Susie Edwards Goose next yes. year can I just ask you with your your talent for you know the, the the painting and it, do you do you, um, ornament um, musical instruments? Yes. So do you paint on drums and things like that? I have done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah. done drums. I've done. I've done all sorts. Drums, leather jackets, everything. Yeah. 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 Because really, once you start creating, once that energy starts coming through, and you need to express it, it yeah. there's no end. Yeah. There. It's, it's limitless. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with <laughs> whatever you're doing for someone, whether it's whether it's tattoo ritual, whether you're you're decorating a drum, or whatever you're doing, making a, an icon. Um, it's that idea of when you sit and you speak to someone and you start to spark off each other and they yeah. tell you their thing and you kind of start to, yeah, and then it, it grows. And that's, yeah. yeah, I like that. Connection. That's, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, listen, it's been great to connect with you. Hello, Lola. Oh, thank you um, for me. 
yeah, it's been brilliant. Now, where can people find you, Susie? Um, your best bet is to look on Facebook, and I have an art page which is artwork of Susie Edwards Goose. And okay, you can find me on there. Um, you can also send me an email, yeah. and my email address is inkwitch three 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 at gmail dot com. Inkwitch. Inkwitch. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, you can drop me an email there. Um, but all my details are on my Facebook page. Excellent. Yeah, my phone number's on there, everything's on there. So, Excellent. Not yeah. too much, I hope. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, that's my other page. We won't talk about that. Oh, you? okay. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Next time. Yes. Okay, well, thanks so much, Susie, for Thank joining you for us. Me. In the tree. It's been brilliant. It's been lovely. And um, yeah, all the best for all your work, all your, Thank you your beautiful work, your own magic. Oh, and likewise. And um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you and goodbye from the treat house. Uh, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy, innit?